All right, welcome Liberty lovers. We are here, Liberty Live. We're gonna be chatting with the founders of Moms for Liberty. While we give everyone a chance to get on, we're gonna start, normally we start all of our chapter meetings with something we call the Madison Minute. And that's just a quote from a founding document or founding fathers. So while we wait for everyone to hop on, I'm gonna share a couple that I found this morning that I really liked. We're gonna start with, this one is my favorite. Educate and inform the whole mass of people. They are the only sure reliance for the preservation of our liberty. Okay, and that is from Thomas Jefferson. Okay, let's see. We have all one common cause. Let it therefore be our only contest. Who shall most contribute to the security of the liberties of America? John, by John Hancock. So remember those, they're important. All the things that our founding fathers are wrote, wrote are good for us to know so that we know the foundations of America. So we're gonna to toss over to Tiffany and Tina. We're gonna pick up the camera and move. You're not gonna see me. I'm gonna ask questions and you're gonna to get to hear from them, okay? All right. So Tiffany is, Tiffany Justice is a former school board member from Indian River County. Tiffany, go ahead and introduce yourself and tell everyone why you chose not to run for school board again if education is so broken. Sure. Um, my name is Tiffany Justice. You have to excuse my voice for today. I apologize. I'm a little, uh, I have a little uh, frog in my throat. Um, I'm a mom of four kids, um, and I advocated for my own children's school, um, and I was really effective. We were able to create a lot of change, and I decided to run for school board um, with the encouragement of my family and friends. And when it came time to run again, I really had to think about um, if I was more effective as a parent and a citizen or as a school board member. And I really think that the power lies with the people in this country. And I, and I really decided that I was going to lead as a citizen um, going forward. So just really excited to be, you know, uniting moms with Tina. Awesome. Well, this is Tina Deskovich. She is also a former school board member, but from Brevard County, Florida. So Tina, tell us, uh, I know that you ran and you lost your race. A lot of people would take that as their cue to bow out, right? But it didn't, that's not what it meant to you. You yeah. used it to spur you on and create this movement. Why, why was that your thing? Yeah, well, just to be clear, I did serve four years. I lost my reelection. So I do have the background also of serving on the school board. You know, I decided after I lost my reelection that I realized that my hands were, were not tied anymore by, yeah. the, by serving in office yeah. any longer. Yeah. Uh, I didn't have to be impartial. I didn't have to, um, you know, when you serve on a school board, you kind of serve in this role sometimes in a quasi-judicial role where you're mediating between the district and the union. And I would, I, I'm now free to, to help parents, to help moms organize. I'm free to do the work that, that needs to be done to help our children. Perfect. So then tell us how Moms for Liberty was born. Oh, that's, you know, that's great. That so Tiffany and I both uh, serve, we're serving during the same four years in the state of Florida, and we became friends over, over the years because a lot of times we stood alone on our school boards, and you kind of get to know each other around the state, those that have the same kind of vision for where education should be going. So uh, we got together shortly after the, um, the election this past year as we were watching these mom groups pop up, right, all over the country. And... Um, and watching parents coming to school board meetings towards the end of our term. I mean, school ended in Florida on March 13th. Um, at that, that day, we said schools were gonna close and everyone quarantined. So um, school board meetings kept happening. And we kept, then when we started going, talking about going back to school, and we did go back to school in August, we had parents coming uh, for the last, I guess, you know, three months of my term, talking about um, all these different concerns that they had. And I had never before seen parents so dismissed by the district. Like normal parent concerns that the district, like board members or the district would have been, you know, children struggling with mental illness or with ADD or with um, different types of medical issues or um, educational issues, disabil learning disabilities. And all of a sudden the district was like, well, you know, that's just one parent. They, that, you know, they, it, there aren't that many parents. And, as a mom on the school board, I was just horrified. And I looked to my other school board members to like see if I was old. And nobody. A lot of blank stares. And a lot of blank thing, stares. The same thing was happening uh, this, with the school board I was serving on. And parents were coming in and speaking and just being ignored, basically. Yeah, 100%. And so we were watching that happen and, and feeling bad, obviously, for these families. And you know, Tiffany and I, serving on the school board, we kind of 
know behind the scenes. We yeah. know the process. We know what's effective. We know how to reach elected officials. We know the the ins and outs of how school districts work. And so we, re we realized that we had some value here on helping these, these parent groups and these mom groups come together. And as we launched here, uh, originally we were just going to launch in Florida and then you know, people started contacting us from around the country where they have more issues, other issues, the same issues, right? Yeah. The same issues that they're not being listened to, uh, their schools aren't even open. And so we realized we could offer, you know, we had some value to offer them too. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So then tell us, I mean, Moms for Liberty, what does liberty mean in the context of your organization? That's my favorite question. And you know, we hear the word liberty all the time, and yet people don't really understand what that means. For us, it's very specific. It's, it's about parental rights. It's about the parents ability to guide the upbringing and education for their children. And that's what we're here to fight for on any issue. You know, we've been pigeonholed in different communities on different issues, and that's not what this is about. This is about the parental rights. Well, we trust moms. We trust parents yeah. to make good decisions for their children. On every issue. Yeah. Okay, then clarify for us, since some people do call you, they label you, right? You're just a crazy anti-mask group. What does Moms for Liberty really stand for then? I feel like I keep starting to think. No, please you go ahead. No. I mean, you know, I, uh, I honestly think that every attempt to pigeonhole us is an attempt to minimize what our impact can be. I think that people realize that no one's going to fight for their kids like a mom. No one's going to fight for any issue like a parent. We're not in it for the money. There's no glory. We, we love our children and we're willing to do anything to protect what their money? future. Yeah. What money? What money? <laughs> oh, and I, I say money. I mean, so many people are motivated by so many different things in our, in our culture, in our community. But when you can harness the power of moms, that love. I mean, Mama Bear, I see, I'm on Twitter. I see these moms. They oh. are don't get in the way of a mom. Yeah, we're so, a volunteer you know, organization just for the record. Oh, absolutely. Right? No, <laughs> I, I apologize. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, no, I just meant moms in general yeah. are motivated by a sense of creating, ensuring a future for their kids. Yeah. And I think as moms today in our society, we are looking and saying, what does the future look like for our children? You know, and we want public education to be a part of it. I want to be clear, we support public education. We know it's important, we value it, and we want to make sure that it continues in the future for generations in this country. But the issues are different from, from state to state and yeah, county to absolutely. county and school district to school district. And that's what we're learning as more chapters are coming on board. And the, one of the great things about our organization, it's not top down. We haven't picked you know, these four issues and nationwide this is what we're going to fight yeah. for. Mm -hmm. It is a grassroots, bottom-up organization. Chapters that are forming in other states, they're fighting just to just to get back to school. You know, they just want the doors open to the school. Other districts are fighting um, some really bizarre quarantine policies that are affecting their children. Other districts are fighting the mask mandates that are happening there, and they want a little more flexibility for their children. So we are not going to dictate or drive that. If it's a parental rights issue, we're going to support our moms wherever they are. Okay. So then, tell us who who is joining Moms for Liberty. And where are chapters popping up? Go ahead, Tiffany. No, and I, <laughs> you know, I, you know I, I, I'm, we're on social media. Um, the power of social media is amazing. And I, we're harnessing that to reach moms. Um, one of the things we've realized is that moms sometimes feel alone. Um, it's really scary to go to a school board meeting and to get up there by yourself. But if you have the camaraderie of parents supporting you, um, that brings a lot of strength. So we see moms all over the country, and Tina, I know, is fielding, I mean, we each try to do different roles. Tina fields chapter requests, and I mean, it's just been incredible um, how quickly we're spreading. Yeah, so I think, you know, in that we want to include that this isn't just moms. We have no, dads yes, that have yes. joined. We have, yeah. you know, aunts, uncles. We have lots of grandparents that are concerned and have joined. Yeah. You know, concerned citizens. I know a few ladies where I live that have showed up at our meetings and said, I don't have kids, but I'm so concerned about this and they want to be part. So everyone is welcome. If you believe in liberty, if you believe in freedom, if you're concerned about parental rights, you're concerned about our country, we want you. Please join us. Okay, so tell, then tell us specifically how can people get involved? Well, that's an easy one, yeah. right? So we have a website, of course, uh, momsforliberty.org. There's a nice join button right on the front. That's the easiest way to get involved. You'll get on our, our mailing list. You'll get um, plugged into what's going on, what issues are important to the different chapters, and we'll help direct you. You have to put in your zip code, I think. It will help yeah. direct you to the closest chapter to you. Now, if um, you know, you're interested in starting a chapter and there's not one already near you, you can talk to me about that. I'm working with... Um, 15 different states right now. We have, 15, we have 15 chapter requests, or we have 30 chapter requests over 15 different states right now. And so it's growing like wildfire, but listen here, there are 13 
13,000 school districts in the country, 13,000. And our goal is to have a group of moms representing parental rights in every single school district. It's a tall order, we've got a long way to go, but we're happy to support any mom groups that wanna start up in their, in their school district. Yeah, and the thing that's happening right now that I think is so important is that parents are really awake. Um, for a long time, um, we've added and added and added to public education the things that are required to be taught in public school. And you know, parents have sometimes been kept outside of that um, intentionally and sometimes not just by the legislation that's passed and the way that precedents get set. So you know, we really want to bring parents back to the table. Um, we want them to have a seat at the table like all other decision makers in the district. And it needs to be equal. Um, we want parents to have a voice again. That's one of the uh, biggest, I guess, topics for us, the biggest issues that we, we are taking on. As we, and as we discussed what the issues were within school districts that we saw, we saw the balance of power off. And we keep posting about this if you follow us on any of our social media accounts. The balance of power is off, and it's been off for a long time. And we don't think that parents knew that, because parents, mm -hmm. you know, you send your kid off, you hope they're doing a good job, they come home with A's and all is well. You didn't realize that, you know, while you were going to work and raising your family, that bureaucrats within the district that aren't elected and accountable to the public, that teachers unions and other organizations have wielded way more power now that you, than you have over the education of your child. And so the goal of our organization is just to bring that balance of power back so parents can guide the education of their children. Okay, so on your website, one of the ways it talks about people to get involved is a Madison meetup. Can you tell us what a Madison meetup is? Yeah, this is mine, I'm taking this one. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, the Madison meetup you know, the core foundation of, of liberty in America comes from our founding documents and our history, which is rich, and it's under attack right now. And, you know, Tiffany and I discussed on how to fix that problem. What can our little organization do about that? And our solution is we form these Madison meetups, and they are amazing. I've been hosting one in my home for a few months now. Uh, they're super flexible. You can host it weekly. Um, monthly, you know, as often as your schedule allows. You gather around with your family or 10 of your, you know, closest friends and you read through our founding documents. And we've offered, if you click on our website, we've offered a way to do that to make it easy and simple. Uh, you know, at each one of these, I've attended a few different ones. People invite me to join, join theirs for one or two meetings. We always start with, how many people in here have read the Constitution of the United States of America? And often it's no one in the room or one person, or you know, at best it's a couple of people that read it in high school, and that's a long time ago for most of us. Yes. So we think it's really important to get in touch and, and realize the, the framework of our government so that you can stand up when you, and know, your, and know what your rights are. It identifies your, you know, your, um, your natural rights. That, Absolutely. And so it's, it's yeah, and, and parental rights is not a partisan issue. And this is a thing that we keep saying again and again and again. There are things that we as a society are going to disagree about, but our founding documents, our founding principles, we can come together um, in those principles and we can find agreement and put our children first. Because, you know, one of the things, and I start to get a little passionate about it, you know, sometimes we see adults not behaving very well. And as a mom, you sacrifice a lot for your children. You're willing to sacrifice, you know, I can't tell you how many times I, that, piece of toast on my plate you went to another you went to one of the kids right you're constantly you give them anything the food off your plate the, and so you know for us it, it just feels like the time is now uh, for parents and, and we want to help them do that awesome so talk to us then if education and all of that is one of the biggest issues in our country what do you think within the education system is the biggest problem today our parents don't have a seat at the table an equal seat at the table. I mean, there's just a total imbalance of power. If you're a parent and you have an issue, um, you know, you really don't have a lot of recourse. Yeah, you, you, said, you, you said that perfectly. And, you know, I've said this in a, I was speaking to a group the other day and I, and I said the same thing, but the thing is parents don't even realize they don't have a seat at the table until, until, until there's a problem yeah. and they need a seat at the table. And what you're seeing now are parents realizing that, whoa, I thought I had a seat at the table and it turns out I got nothing. Or I thought the people that I voted for were representing, representing me yeah. and my interests, and they're not. And so, you know, that's something that we have to wake up and say, okay, if people are making bad decisions for our kids now, what's gonna stop them from continuing to make bad decisions? And you know, that Maya Angelou quote, when someone shows you who you are, they are, believe them, you know, I, I tell my kids that, 
And, and that's something I think we as parents need to tell ourselves. We see you, we know, and now we're paying attention. And you know, elections have consequences and, and you know, elections are coming up soon. Hey, I just want to add that if you guys have questions, uh, Marie here is monitoring the Facebook feed, I think, right, Marie? And so you can type your questions in there. She's got lists of questions she wants to ask us, but if you have something pressing... Oh, you know, I see. Type it in. Hey, and, Larissa. <laughs> yeah. So Thank Larissa's a mom from Indian River County. She said she's a Russian mom. She's, she moved here from Russia. And so if you want to have a conversation about what's happening in America right now and some of the concerns that Larissa has as an immigrant, I mean, she's a good person to talk to. Find her on Facebook or Instagram. Um, you know, really, really involved, active mom. Yeah, Great. so in the feed, we've had a lot of different moms say they have groups that they've kind of gotten together to try and do this in their areas. Yeah. And they're talking about, you know, uniting with Moms for Liberty. It makes a good point. There are a lot of great Moms for groups out there. Yeah. What makes Moms for Liberty different? What is unique about your group? Well, I think the fact that we're school board members and we have a different insight, we just have a different take on it. Um, when you're on the other side as a school board member, so you're a parent, right? And then you become a school board member, but you're still a parent. And you're, you're like, whoa, 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 wait a second. <laughs> you're doing what? Or this money is going, we pay how much for certain? So I think we have insight and, and we understand the way government works. So our hope is to be able to connect moms locally with other elected officials and other people that understand government to help support them in their own local communities. Um, because we understand how, how, powerful that connection can be and we believe that this country there are people in this country that want to get involved in helping us in education and we just need to connect the dots with them look when we decided to form this organization one of the main things we noticed is there was a vacuum like there was no there was no one representing parents and kids in the education at the education table and we think we're uniquely qualified, I guess. That's, you know, it sound, that sounds like a, you know. No, we'll but you know what? Great, right, you say that too. You take a lot of flack when you stand up for yeah. kids. And for, and you know, and I know we're, you know, I'm on Twitter and I'm kind of, I'm, you know, I'm poking a few bears, I'm sure. And, you know, I've been there before. I've done that as a school board member. I'm not scared anymore. I, I have taken a lot of heat. You've taken a lot of heat. People have said a lot of not nice things. And we did a post. And I, we said, you can call us names. Yeah. You can post nasty comments. We will not stop, we cannot stop. We're fighting for our kids, right? Well, that's what we noticed. We saw these yeah. moms standing up individually, you know, at my school board meeting, your school board meeting, around the country, and just the abuse <sighs> that comes out after you, and all you're doing is advocating for your child who has mental health struggles right now, or has become addicted to a computer screen because of so much Zoom learning, or they're not getting, uh, you know, any quality learning at all through the Zoom learning at home. Or you're worried so, about your child. Yeah, I mean, yeah, absolutely. You, you absolutely have the right to stand up and you have the right to have an army behind you and that's what our plan is, is to help you have an army behind yeah, you. Yeah, to, to help when moms never feel alone. Yeah, so uh, as you just said, right, a lot of times when a mom does stand up, they end up taking a lot of hate. The cause for liberty brings, for some reason, just the anger and frustration out of people. So why do you think that is and how do you guys handle the hate? I, just, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I think, you know, you can only be called so many, you know, sticks and stones. I, I, for me, as a, as a mom and as a school board member, and, it, you know, it wasn't always easy, um, my children are watching me. So I try to model good behavior. I will show them how to deal with bullies. You say, no, go tell. <laughs> That's what I do. What do you tell? Don't, you say, tell kids, say no. Oh, and then no, you go no, and no, yeah, no, you tell the person, no, you can't treat me that way. And so, you know, a lot of those lessons that we teach our kids are actually really useful when dealing with people with, you know, people who just are, are not going to be nice. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, can I be real for a minute? Because sure. the second part of your question was, why is there so much hate? Well, re, yeah. wait, say that again. How does, that why does the cause of liberty stir up so much anger? Why does the cause of liberty stir up so much hate? I don't have the answer to that, but I do know that. The fight for liberty is an eternal fight. It's been going on since the beginning of time. And, you know, Tiffany and I have decided with you all out there to take up this fight. And whenever throughout history there's been a fight for freedom, a fight for liberty, there's been an evil fighting against it. And that's, that's just a fact of life. And if you're ready to stand up against it with us, we want you to join us. And we'll stand with you. We'll support you. We will put on all the armor that we can and we'll share just our armor just get yeah. a t-shirt oh you get my armor, armor now yeah. Yeah. Have one on. so yeah get your moms for liberty t-shirt on our website or our facebook store and um you know that's your armor
put it on. We'll wear one with you. We'll stand there with you. We'll protect you, you know, if we can with... A mom know. told me the other day at one of the meetings that um, she saw Moms for Liberty shirts and she had heard about us on Facebook or Twitter, social media somewhere. And she was like, oh, I heard about your group. And I went up and I talked to that mom because I knew that it was someone that, you know, I could count on to at least listen, yeah. right? To at least take a second and be like, hey, just a friendly face. You're not alone. Well, I'm, I'm glad that we can be that for that moment. Yeah, it was awesome. It was awesome. Everywhere. I mean, that's the thing. You know, there, there's so much. Um, it feels good to be able to get involved again and to make a difference and to help moms because leaving school board, you know, you think to yourself, like, how you know, we left in such a term, it's tumultuous time. You know, there's so much going on in education. And um, to be a steadying force, I think moms can do that. Moms can be a steadying force. Yeah. So as two people who've held public office and probably gotten used to taking some of the hate, mm -hmm. what would you tell these moms that are joining up and getting involved and standing for the first time? What tips would you give them for dealing with the haters? Ignore it. It's easy to say. Yeah. It's easy to say, but I know it weighs on you. Don't, um, I don't want to say don't fight back because that's what we're doing. We're fighting back, mm -hmm. but don't be reactive. I, don't, don't get in the mud pit. You need to... Think about how you want to respond, how your kids are looking at you, and respond thoughtfully. But you know, you don't back down. Um, but also, but you know, boundaries are important. So I think if you're yeah. being abused, or if you know you're in your district and you are dealing with some flack from whatever group you're dealing with, um, you know, I think people generally see that group for what it is and the way that they treat you. So sometimes you can just draw a boundary and you can just say, you know what, I'm not going to engage. Um, block them on social media. I was just going to say, I, I, I have mean, learned boundaries <laughs> yeah. since uh, since not being in elected office anymore. Uh, here in Florida, you can't block people if you're in elected office. You have to just take the abuse. And the online bullies are bad. We all know that. Uh, it was, I don't know, it was two or three weeks into this venture and I called Tiffany with some you know nasty stuff that was being sent my way. And she goes, delete and block. Delete and block. And I was like, what? I've never done that. I've never blocked uh, anybody. Yeah, I never blocked anybody on when I was like, in school board. That's your personal Facebook page. Like that's that's like your living room. That's your home. That's your place. That's she's like just delete and block. And I called her back and I was like, I just deleted and blocked ten people, <laughs> and it felt so bad. So you know, we don't have yeah. to take it either. And you know, we don't we don't have to. We finally have each other. And she said, Tina, you are finally not alone in this anymore. Yeah. You have me, and I'm not going anywhere. And I, you know, I kind of welled up because I thought, huh. Oh, I have her, and so we we just want to bring that to everyone. We want every mom that's standing up for her kid to have someone. And when you go to that school board meeting and you're getting heckled, you you make sure you bring your friend. And there's at least two of you standing there. And there's so much more strength than that. Yeah, and and really wanting to help moms to be more effective advocates for their kids. When you say that, I what I hear is you know, being able to say to moms, we're here to support you, but let's look at your state statutes. Let's look at different things in the government that you may be able to use to help you, um, you know, protect your rights. Yeah, we haven't gotten into a lot of the meat. Maybe we'll do another Facebook Live yeah. soon where we'll get into the meat of how to fight some of these things. Um, the, the start is to find a few like-minded friends and either join a chapter or start a chapter. And then we can work with you in your own community with what the issues you're facing and help, you know, connect you to those that you need to help fight whatever the issue is that you guys are up against. Well, that's all our questions, and I've seen no questions in the comments, just a lot of love. So oh, nice, thank love. you. Would you have <laughs> Did anything? somebody block all our haters? <laughs> <laughs> anything y'all want to leave them with before we close out? Yeah, I, I, I want you, if you think that you don't fit with us, I want you to um, call us and talk to us about it. Don't immediately say, like, oh, you know, like, oh, they said they blocked their haters. I, I love um, lots of different ideas and lots of different people, and I, this is about parents and uniting parents. So um, call us and talk to us. Tina and I um, are available, and, and we just want to, you know, help you to find, help you to, to fight in your district and to help make sure that, you know, adults are putting kids first. Yeah, I, I guess I should clarify. We, we don't disapprove of dissenting opinions. No. This isn't you have to think like Tiffany and Tina in order to be part of this Ooh. group or even to be on our page and, and make comments. No. Uh, it's just when they're downright disgusting and hateful. Then you know, Yeah, if you curse, we're going to block you. It, if we're you... moms. <laughs> Don't actually say in that Swear jar. Maybe, can, oh, maybe we can do it this way. Wait, I know we're trying to wrap this up, but I actually implemented the swear jar on our school board because a lot of times our smaller meetings, some people would like to use curse words and they all know that I have the swear jar up. Tina's coming with her swear jar. We actually had a swear cup and we collect the money and buy the office um, 
candy. So, so we're gonna we're try, so here's the thing. <laughs> we're gonna try to make this fun, okay? Yeah. We want this to be something that is fun, that is positive, that helps you to feel like you can make a difference in the world and in your child's life and in your community because we know that you can. Um, so join us, let's have some fun and let's put kids first again in America. That was powerful, but I just want to wrap it up with, uh, you know, some housekeeping here. So go to our website, momsforliberty.org. You can join, you can donate. Um, I know Tiffany mentioned we're not in it for the money, no. but we do need small funds to help fund some um, back-end housekeeping office things, databases to collect and manage the chapters. And so we need to raise money for that. So feel free to go donate. We have merchandise if you want to help spread the word. You know, we have t-shirts. Um, we have car magnets now. We have some hats coming very soon. We're pretty excited about that. If you want to start a chapter and you already have a group of moms or parents together in your community and you want to be part of this bigger organization, reach out. There's a start a chapter button on the website. I personally will be contacting you uh, within the next couple of days if you send us something and we can just incorporate you right in and be, give you a chapter charter and get moving. If you're just a single mom out on a very lonely island somewhere and you think no one thinks like you in some community, reach out because I would love to talk to you and help support you in whatever fashion we can. Follow us on Twitter. Yeah, oh, follow us on Twitter. Twitter's great. Yeah. I, I know, we know there's lots Instagram, of information. Instagram, we got yeah. that up and running now. Yeah. Um, and, you know, whatever other social, we have a YouTube account. We're learning. Started. Yeah, we're our, kid, our, kids are, our kids are helping us sometimes, <laughs> too. Like yeah, that. we may or may not have had Tiffany's daughter down here helping us turn off notifications so we and could get We might this. need her back to tell us how to stop it, too. <laughs> so, <laughs> so thank you very right. much. We hope you have a great day, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.